Hi, my name is Dr. David Oliver, I'm a chiropractor, and today what we're going to talk to you about is forward head posture. Uh, forward head posture is basically any time you take your head and it gets moved in front of your body. It's an abnormal posture that we see in people, and it's probably the number one postural distortion I see with my patients. And there's a really good reason for this. It's what we all do in society nowadays. Sitting in front of computers, driving our cars, texting on our phones. All of those activities involve focusing on something in front of you. And anytime your body focuses on something in front of it, the tendency is to move forward. So if we're looking at a computer screen, your body is going to want to move or get closer to that object. And then when we're texting, which is super common nowadays, we have this position. Again, your head is in front of your body. So that's that forward head posture. The reason this is so problematic is the amount your head weighs. Most heads on average weigh 10 to 14 pounds. Now, if you, you extrapolate that and take that into a real world situation, think of a bowling ball. Most bowling balls are on the high end, 10 to 14 pounds. So you take that bowling ball and stick it on top of your body. Something's gonna have to keep that up there. So basically the muscles in your upper back and neck, your ligaments, the joints of your spine have to maintain that position so your head doesn't flop down and hit you in the chest. So if we move that object in front of our body, it actually causes that more stress. They've done studies on it, and through gravitational forces, every inch your body, your head moves forward, it gains 10 pounds. Move it two inches forward, three inches forward. You could be up to 30 to 34 pounds of pressure that needs to be absorbed by those muscles and those ligaments. You know, if you palpate around and you feel around anybody in this area right here and you do it to yourself right now, you're going to probably feel some kind of bumpy, knotty things up there. That's not the way that's supposed to be. The reason you're having that is because those muscles have been under high load for extended periods of time for years now. So you're going to develop adhesions, you're going to develop trigger points in those muscles, which can be felt all the way down into the mid to even the low back. The other area that can be affected is the actual spine itself. So the joints of the spine or the bony portions of the spine can now become more degenerative over time. So you're placing more stress on the spine. Over time, the spine naturally degenerates. But if you put the spine or you put the head, more importantly, in a different position, it puts more pressure into these joints. Eventually, that's going to start to lead to wear and tear, so degenerative changes. Uh, if you do that enough, there's also a thing between the vertebrae, the disc of the spine, which can become problematic as well. You know, you've heard of bulge discs, herniated discs. These are very common and very problematic for people. So that anterior head position can really cause uh, abnormal stress on those discs and eventually lead to wear and tear. And this is something that we, we see very often in my office and it's something I prefer not to see. But there's easy ways to address this and fix this. All right, so let's go through three exercises we can use to try to correct this forward head posture and these postural distortions we see in people. The first one we're gonna go through is called a chin tuck. Basically, if you turn to the side, you're gonna take the head, it typically is in that forward head position. Well, we're just gonna reverse it. We're just gonna bring it back. Some people, this is actually a very hard thing to do, but essentially all we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck the chin backwards. It's an abnormal motion for, pe for people and it feels weird. And some people don't even have great range of motion when they do it. So what we'll have people start out doing is taking two fingers, placing it on their chin, and they're gently gonna push backwards. Okay? You're gonna go as far as you feel comfortable. If this causes any abnormal pain in your neck or any abnormal pain anywhere else, this is not a good exercise for you and you should not do it. But we're just trying to accentuate or trying to get that chin to go backwards to get your body more comfortable being in that position. Initially, it might just feel awkward and a little bit uh, uncomfortable or achy. That's totally normal because your body's not used to that. You've spent so much time with your head in this position, getting it back to a normal position here is not going to feel great for you. So this exercise, generally there's two ways to do it. We can do repetitions or we can do holds. So you can just sit there and work on, if you're using your fingers, pushing back nice and slow, repetitions. 10 to 15 is usually a good number. As you get comfortable with it, you want to take your fingers away. You want to learn to be able to do that motion yourself. So what you should essentially feel is some packing in the front of your neck. It gets kind of tight. And then you might feel a little bit of stretch discomfort in this upper back, in this upper, in this, in this upper neck here, which is totally normal. So 10 to 15 times in the reps. Or you can do holds. So you can sit here and you can hold the position for up to 10 seconds. And you can just repeat that five times. This is an easy exercise. I give this to all my patients with any upper back or neck dysfunction that are qualified for it. Uh, the, the reason I like it is because you can do it anywhere. Most people, I tell them to do it in the car when they get to a traffic light. When you get to a red light, sit there, bang out 10 of them, 
and then go on. You can do that several times a day. You can even do it in your office. Some people don't feel comfortable doing that, but you know, it's better than having neck pain, isn't it? All right, so the second exercise we're gonna do is actually gonna be targeted at the upper back and the neck. You know, when people have that forward head posture, it's not just the head that typically comes forward, it's actually the shoulders that come forward as well. So as the head moves forward, we tend to round into it, especially when we're typing and we're working on computers or texting or driving. Everything nowadays is in front of us, so our shoulders actually start to come forward. So on our backside, our shoulder blades, which sit on our back, tend to come rounded forward a little bit on most people. Uh, so what we wanna do is we wanna work on an exercise to bring those back into a more neutral position and then at the same time work on keeping our head in a nice, neutral, stable position. So it's called the W exercise. So you, the reason it's called the W is because you're gonna start with your arms bent at the side like this, so you're in the shape of a W. So you're simply gonna take your shoulder blades on your back and you're gonna squeeze them together and down. So my shoulder blades are on my back, I'm bringing them together and down. The analogy for most people is feel like you're tucking your shoulder blades in your back pocket. It's really important with this exercise that you don't overdo it. You're not sitting there trying to squeeze your shoulder blades as hard as possible. That is actually gonna bring your shoulders up, which is the opposite of what we wanna do. So if I'm gonna spin around, I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the backside. So if we're here with the W position, you're gently gonna bring your shoulders together and down. Again, you're not jamming them together here. It's just a gentle squeeze together. You should feel this, motion, this contraction go on in that mid back. At the same time, it's really important to pay attention to your head position. Most people, as they do this, move that head forward, just like we don't want to do, right? So you want to get that head in a nice, neutral, tucked position like we showed you in exercise one. And then at the same time, a gentle squeeze between those shoulder blades. With this exercise, you're going to hold. You're going to hold five seconds, and then you're going to repeat five times. So again, we're working on bringing those shoulder blades together and down slightly. And we can hold, good five second hold, and relax. And you're gonna do it again. You're gonna tuck and squeeze the shoulders. It's a very small movement that you see in the mid back and the shoulder blades, and relax. So the third exercise we're gonna do is a good combination exercise. It takes in pieces of the first and second exercise and it expands on that even further. It's called the YWLT exercise. So four letters It's basically gonna describe the positions we're gonna be into. So you're gonna essentially start with your arms up into a big Y position. So nice and tall arms, you're gonna make sure you're not shrugged up, you're gonna be relaxed in your shoulders, you're gonna make sure your head, again, is not coming forward. You're gonna keep that head in a nice neutral position. So up in this Y position, you're gonna expand your hands and you're gonna pull your arms back as far as you feel comfortable. You should feel a nice, strong stretch through your, your chest here and into your arms and even into your hands. So we're gonna sit in that position for two big belly breaths. So you're gonna to wanna to breathe in nice and deep. Breathe in through your nose, and breathe out through your mouth. So you're gonna sit there with two breaths. Good. From that position, we're gonna go from the Y, we're gonna drop down into a W. So we did the W already, so we're just combining this one into this third exercise right here. So again, elbows down to the side. Now we're really expanding, opening that chest up. You wanna feel that strong stretch. You wanna feel it through your mid back. Two breaths again. From there, we're gonna drop down to the L. This is usually the most uh, uh, aggressive stretch we feel with this. We're really gonna pinch our elbows to our side. We wanna make sure we get those guys down. And you almost wanna picture you got someone behind you grabbing your thumbs and pulling them together. You wanna feel a good, strong squeeze in between these shoulder blades. You're making sure as you do this, you're not rising up. You're keeping your shoulders nice and relaxed and you're keeping your head in a good neutral position. So again, two breaths of that one, and then we're gonna shoot out to the T position. So straight arms right out, we're spreading those fingers, we're opening the chest up, we're keeping our shoulders relaxed, we're not letting them shrug up, and we're keeping that head nice and neutral for another two counts. So two breaths, so in through your nose, out through your mouth, and we're gonna do that twice. So that's the YWLT. So you will live taller. However you want to remember it is good for me, but those are good posture break exercises. Do this several times a day. It'll help open your chest up, help keep your head in a good neutral position, and it'll help combat some of that stressful forward head posture you're doing to yourself every day.
All right, we hope you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like us to send you a PDF of some of the most effective exercises to fix forward head posture, we'll send it to your email. Uh, all you need to do is click on a link somewhere here on the video, or there's gonna be a link in the description below if you're watching on YouTube, and we'll send you that PDF right away. Um, otherwise, please like and share this video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to check out our website, backintelligence.com.